uh, 32, 32 degree weather woke me up this morning walking over here. Let us pray. God of, God of the covenant, be close to your people who gather here today as we wait in joyful hope this Advent season. May we be ever vigilant and faithful to your word, word made flesh. If you would respond, Lord, make us one. For creativity and sensitivity, breaking down barriers and attitude and architecture, we pray, Lord, that our community may continue God's mission of compassion for people with disabilities, offering appropriate support and services, we pray, that people with disabilities may respond with trust to community efforts, to involve them more fully in the life of faith communities and our community at large. We pray Lord, that neighborhoods will be open, will open their hearts and help people with disabilities, especially those that hinder our growth in God's love. We pray. Lord, <coughs> Creator God, you make each person, each living person in your image, which is your gift of love and commitment to the human race. Guide our hands to build access and welcome. Guide our minds to understand the power and the wisdom of human vulnerability. Give us, uh, give our understanding that we may, we may never leave incomplete or leave people behind. Give us an appreciation of the role we play as John the Baptizer did in spreading your good news to everyone we meet. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You can remain standing for this morning's Mingle Minutes. Okay. You so we plant a secret shaker. Among you for our Mingle Minute, and this morning, our secret shaker is Gary Latham from Wendell Foster. Gary, where are you, mate? There you are. Okay, so Gary, who did you shake hands with, my friend? Who are we picking this morning? Gary Hart. Gary Hart. You're willing to make the pick. Gary Hart. Say one more time. Gary Hart. Gary, where are you, my friend? Come on over, Gary. We have some really uh, cool stuff for you this morning, courtesy of Wendell Foster Center. We have uh, a Miller House gift card for you this morning. And we're going to make you run at the Wendell Foster Center at Marathon. Congratulations. 13.1 miles. You got this, Gary. We're all rooting for you. At this time, we'd like to welcome our radio listeners this morning who are tuning in on WOMI on this world. That is 99.1 FM and 1490 AM. And we're going to give a big shout out and recognize our brand new chamber members this morning. Uh, and first up, we have Erite Strategics, working with small and selected groups of individuals who are looking to improve their strategic business position. Use the good hand, Candace. Uh, they have provided guidance. By the way, I would like it to be known for the record that I drove Miss Daisy to the chamber breakfast this morning. Thank you. They have provided guidance for companies at every stage of development, from startup, funding, to merger, acquisition, and sale. Past engagements have been in a variety of sectors, including uh, lead aggregation, high net worth insurance, video analytics, and artificial intelligence. So please welcome Tim Allen with Airte Strategics. Integrity is an old world business that everybody knows for something different. Uh, in the spring, people recognize integrity by its six acre, uh, acre garden center on Burley Boulevard, where they sell trees and shrubs, flowers, and natural stone, plus awesome patio furniture. Others know integrity for its landscape and outdoor design, patios, lighting, outdoor kitchens. In the fall, Integrity completely transforms into the Christmas store or one's world's holiday headquarters. Integrity, a lot of identities, all grounded in local 
expert service and unique quality products. Please welcome Rachel, Christopher, Jerry, Mark, and Charlotte from Integrity. Owensboro Peddlers Mall is part of a family owned and operated flea tea chain of 19 retail stores located throughout Kentucky, Indiana, and Ohio. They specialize in vintage items, oddities, furniture, collectibles, antiques, and anything new or old. They buy, sell, and save, or you can, with their unique shopping experience. Save time and shop online. Peddlers Mall also offers online shopping through their website or their app with free in-store pickup and affordable shipping options. Please welcome Holly Carter, Kyle Bevan, and Jennifer DeVoe, Lisa Pate, Kevin Harris from Owensboro Peddlers Mall. The Owensboro Pickleball Association strives to actively promote the development of the sport of pickleball in the Owensboro community, schools, and surrounding areas. They pride themselves in providing an environment for learning and improving skills while making lifelong friendships and associations through friendly competition and good sportsmanship. OPA hosts pickleball tournaments, fundraisers, and beginner classes throughout the community to support their mission. So please welcome Renee and Gary with the Owensboro Pickleball Association. Signs by Gina has been in business since 1997 here in Owensboro. Some of you probably know them. They've always tried to stay on top of the latest technology, printers and CNC routers and laser. They have the tools to do printing of many uh, types, but ex expressly custom work. If you have a simple poster or a banner, all the way to printing on glass or wood or vinyl wraps, don't hesitate to call or come by and see them. Please welcome Larry Taylor with Signs by Gina. Taco Tuesdays is locally owned and operated at its family-friendly restaurant that caters to the customers who rely on great service, entertainment, and most of all, great food. Their concept is to provide a relaxed environment that comforts all social classes, all cultures, and all schedules. So come to Town Square Mall and try out the best tacos in town. Please welcome Charles Decker and Amber Fulkerson with Taco Tuesdays. Owensboro CrossFit is a veteran-owned CrossFit facility that specializes in coach-led small group classes. With over 10,000 classes to their credit, Owensboro CrossFit has fine-tuned the model of fitness and can accommodate any athlete, no matter their experience level. Follow Owensboro CrossFit on Facebook and Instagram to see their chamber member special pricing. Please welcome Jay Lineback with Owensboro CrossFit. His last name is Lineback, and he works in CrossFit. That is just that's too much to it's absolute perfection, actually. Uh, at this time, it is uh, time to recognize our special guests and elected officials who are with us this morning. Um, again, apologies if we miss you. We do scan the crowd each and every time. Uh, Kentucky State Representative DJ Johnson here this morning. Uh, you guys can stand as we uh, call your names. Uh, Mayor uh, Tom Watson is here today. Uh, City Commissioner Pam Smith-Wright is right down front this morning. City Commissioner Larry Condor is here today, as well as City Commissioner Jay Vallada. County Commissioner George Waffen. Uh, Judge Jay Webbington is here. Jailer R. Maglinger. Um, Commissioner-elect Larry Maglinger is here. Uh, we have Owensboro Public School Board members with us, Dan Griffith and Jeremy Edge. Give all those folks some folks. Hello. <laughs> Give them a round of applause. We appreciate the service. Uh, and another very special recognition to get to in our special guest uh, this morning. Uh, this guy's here all the time, but this morning we're going to point him out for a big reason. Um, he actually just won the Kentucky Travel Industry Association's Emerging Leader of the Year Award. I mean, taking out folks from Lexington and Louisville and Bowling Green, big areas of the state. Uh, our very own Dave Kirk from Visit Owens World snagged that award. Uh, we're 
going to recognize our ambassador of the month. We're going to keep the love going. Uh, and in the spirit of the holiday season, okay, two things. I wore this glamorous Christmas sweater for you today. It looks like Santa regurgitated all of his cookies onto one canvas, but here it is. Um, so, let's do this. <clears throat> Lounge singer style. You know Tina and Kevin, Wes Roberts, and Brenda. You know them, right? Yes. Keep it going. Minga and Amber and Ryan and Belinda. But do you recall the most famous ambassador of them all? Casey Taylor. The Chamber Ambassador. He had a very shiny head. And if you ever saw him, you'd say he looks like Right Said Fred. <laughs> Come on up, buddy. You're our Chamber Ambassador of the Month. That is a $50 gift card to Mark Louie. Oh, wait. We're not done. It's a party gifts. <laughs> Got a very shiny nose. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's not blinking. I got paid two dollars and ninety-five cents for this. I cannot. Who's <laughs> <laughs> got those antlers on the wall? How about that? There you go! Oh, that's fun. Okay, see, I'm glad you're a good sport. Okay, uh, and it's time to introduce our uh, breakfast sponsor, and we're so thrilled to have these folks with us today. Uh, CEO of Wendell Foster, y'all please welcome Eric Sharp. So I'm going to do it right off front, so I don't forget. I want to recognize the board members of Wine and Foster and the great support that they've given us. Can you please stand, all the board members? <laughs> all the support staff, administrative staff of Wine and Foster, please stand. donors past the year and many years of Wendell Foster, I'm not going to ask you to stand, but thank you very, very much. It can't be done without a God. Thank you. <coughs> Y'all was on purpose. <laughs> it's written in the speech. Right? It's been a year since I arrived here. It always worked. Once I arrived at Wendell Foster to take on the role of CEO, I've learned a lot. I learned that now I live in a community that not only supports people with disabilities, but their whole hearts, but with all their acceptance and with the kindness and their generosity. I've learned that Wendell Foster is a greatly respected organization throughout the state of Kentucky and beyond. I've learned that we serve over 1,300 children and adults and employ over 350 people. We have an operating budget of over $19 million, with almost all of it going back into the community. We, what I've learned is that the need for our services and supports continues to go regardless of our organic initiatives. Our desire for integration, the ongoing development of opportunities for people of all abilities to actively participate in the community, and the need for expanded outpatient therapy <laughs> services are extremely evident. Within the last three years, we have grown 125% in our outpatient services, reaching over 600 people supported. As of December 1st, our outpatient winning list stands at 57. 
Although we make strides for to reduce the waiting list, we ultimately are playing a seesaw game, one step forward, five steps backwards. As our treatment environment is at capacity, the needs of our community continue to change without us being able to fully address those needs. Because of environmental factors, space, and acceleration of resources, we continue to struggle. We believe that this is unacceptable and not in concert with the long-standing philosophy of Wendell Foster and our beloved Elder. So, we at Wendell Foster have strategically planned to remediate our current challenge. Over the next three to five years, we plan to knock down these barriers by building new treatment facilities, with direct programming, and to build additional buildings to address efficiency and to integrate new technology and innovative evidence-based practices. This will require expanded programming and additional physical space to accommodate the needs of people currently not supported. Our board approved plan calls for relocating the maintenance department from the current space on 9th and Triplet to a new building on 6th and Center. This will make way for a new state-of-the-art comprehensive outpatient rehabilitation facility that will connect with our current outpatient facility, nearly doubling our potential capacity for services. Unfortunately, with positive change, there are sometimes a downside. The chapel, where the maintenance building currently is located, will need to be removed <coughs> to make room for the new outpatient facility. This has weighed very heavy on our hearts. But we are confident that this is the right move and in spirit with what Wendell Foster himself would have determined in order to address the needs of our public. <coughs> we hope you will join us as we look forward to an exciting period of growth. There are a couple of events that I want to mention that are coming up this spring. The first is our inaugural half marathon on March 23rd. You have information at your tables. If you'd like to be a participant, a sponsor, or a volunteer. The second is Go Baby Go. Your program officially launched a couple months ago. I want to share a short video about this initiative. First, I want to thank you all for your support, both for the people we serve at Wendell Foster and for welcoming me and my family. We look forward to a long and prosperous future together. And now, Go On March 23rd, people from all over the Tri-State will toe the line for the Wendell Foster Half Marathon. Some people think the best part of the race is the scenery. Some people think it's the great race swag. But I know the best part about the race. The race supports 1,300 children and adults with disabilities. See, at Wendell Foster, our vision is to be the region's resource for all of them. <laughs> Run with us on March 23rd and support our mission of empowering people with disabilities. John Gleason is actually here this morning and he's sitting. <laughs> Where's the newspaper photographer? Snap that, please. It doesn't happen very often. It's time for our chamber update and to present that for you all, our president and CEO, Candace Brick. Good morning, everybody. We have a lot going on to talk about this month, but first, before we start, I'd like to introduce two very special people who are here with us today. And if they would stand and give it a big Owensboro welcome. First of all, we have our new president and CEO of the Greater Owensboro Economic Development Corporation, Ms. Brittany Johnson. And we also have the new director of the Owensboro Regional Airport, Rob Barnett. Rob, would you please stand? Rob and Brittany, we're so glad you're here. We look forward to welcoming you to the youth of the community and working with you to push this community forward. The 2019 Business of the Year Awards are open now. We're looking for nominations. They're actually due tomorrow. We have a list of those on our website. They've been in our weekly email. This is a great way to honor people 
that you know that are doing great stuff, best practices, and really to uh, elevate their business too. So consider nominating an individual for some of our awards or a business that you know for one of our several categories. And those will be honored at our Chamber Celebration on January the 25th, 2019. It's a great event. Last year we had uh, between six and 700 people. The sponsorship guides are available now on our website. And Kirk Kirkpatrick, would you please stand? He will be our Master of Ceremonies. Thank you very much, Kirk. <laughs> partner with Independence Bank to do businesses for backpacks and the CYP um, we have 500 kids now that get backpacks weekly um, with their food in it that they need for the weekend. We're also doing a blanket drive. Uh, we'd like for each child that gets a backpack to be able to get a blanket for this winter. So we actually are taking those today. We still are taking them at the chamber office. We do need many more so please consider dropping a blanket off at the office so we can let those children not only be fed but be warm this, this winter. Ribbon cuttings that are coming up tomorrow, tomorrow at the Owensboro Peddlers Mall. And then at Jay's West, Moonlight and Jay's have partnered to come up with a Pitmasters Reserve wine. And they're going to unveil that, that tomorrow at 4 p.m. at Jay's West. On December the 11th, we have Taco Tuesday's ribbon cutting. December the 12th, the Department of Juvenile Justice. And December the 20th, Little Legends. So make sure you can come out to one of those ribbon cuttings. Welcome these great businesses to the chamber and to the community. As you know, now we have available a health insurance plan that's accompanied with a wellness plan. We have a Jacqueline is always there to answer questions about that and lead you to one of our many uh, chamber member providers for that great insurance program and wellness benefit. Thank you to all of our renewals. At your place, you'll see a list of our renewals. Those are the people that are investing in our community. They understand that chamber membership is not only what you get out of it, but what the community gets out of our collective voice. So please look through that list and thank those businesses and individuals for investing in you, and we ask that you invest back in them. And those are the witnesses in the list. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of renewal this month. John Conti, thank you for being here. As always, our award-winning coffee partner. And so Shop Owensboro was a couple of weeks ago. That's our small business Saturday here in Owensboro. And we have a lot of merchants. It's really just a huge movement here in our community. And we'd like to talk to you a little bit about that. Remember, it's not just that one weekend, the small business Saturday. It's the rest of the season that we ask for you to get out and keep your money home. Those dollars turn over between three to five times in this community when you spend them here at home. And I wanted to read a list of our participants just to show you the depth of people that participated this year. It's grown about 300% since we first started. We, we have just a, a great group of small businesses. And it's a long list, but bear with me because they all deserve a shout out. 270 Power Yoga, Adorn Boutique, All About You Salon and Spa, Anna Gale's Boutique, Austin Affordable Detailing, Be Real Sports, Bella Ragazza, Blush Boutique, Boucher's, Fire and Barclay, Consumer Mall, Crazy Me Gifts, Dandelion Wishes, Embellish, In Vogue Boutique, Escape Today, Excursions, Jeans Health Foods, Hillview Farms Meats, In the Groove, Kid Stop Boutique, Country Cutter, Lance and Company, Legends, New Life Thrift, Nick T. Arnold, Owensboro Family Eye Care, Owensboro Health Park, Out of the Blue, Owensboro Family Pharmacy, Owensboro Pedler Small, Party Paper Place, Peacocks and Pearls, Pizza Rama, Preservation Station, Pure Bar Owensboro, Red Door Boutique, Red Wing Shoes, Robbins Resale and Boutique, Say It Southern, Scrub Shop, Shoe Stop, Simply Chic, Home Accents, Skills VR, Starbucks Frederick Street, Studio Slant, The Christmas Store at Integrity, The Earl, The Sturdy Hinge, The Veranda, The Willow Tree, Tom Blue Furniture, Trison's Gifts, Trunnels at the Farm, Trunnels on 54, Wilburn, Wilburn's Floral, and Wheatgrass Juice Bar. That just shows the depth of our small business community here and how much we get involved in one another and to, to lift the, the boat up by rising that tide, right? So thank you all so much. Kyle Odd is here from Independence Bank. We have a, a, a placard that we've got outside. We ask for you to stop on your way out and take a picture with him. We have a thing on the chalkboard that says, Why I Shop Local, and we're going to use that for next year's video. So we ask that you stop by, take a picture, and tell us why you shop on Sparrow. <coughs>
very excited about this morning's uh, featured speaker and to introduce him. Our former board chair here at the Greater Orleans World Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Wade Jenkins. First of all, my apologies. I promised you at the end of 2016 that you wouldn't have to see me speak anymore. Uh, but I was drafted today, so I do, do what I need to do. Um, and Eric, I noticed you said y'all three times during your speech, so I think you're going to be okay. I, I think you're a keeper. Uh, and Kyle, I can't wait to have my picture made with you afterwards. And maybe even an autographed picture would be great from my office. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize uh, some of the old national leadership, our local advisory board, and our staff. Thank you for all you do. If you would stand briefly or wave your hand a little bit. I figured I'd get the word in my hand, but, uh, but thank you very much, and thanks for all you do. Uh, and now I'll get the pleasure uh, to introduce uh, Ben Trockman. Ben is a graduate of the University of Southern Indiana. He joined O National Bank in 2014 and is now in the role of Diversity Inclusion Outreach Specialist. Ben has been challenged to assist O National become a leader in disability employment and inclusion through, through education and awareness. While working to enhance recruiting efforts and rethinking the hiring process to successfully recruit, onboard, and employ people with disabilities, Ben also manages Achieve Ability Professional Mentoring Program at Oak National Bank. Ben is active with disability advocacy community and works with legislators in Washington, D.C. and Indianapolis to improve employment opportunities, airline accessibility, health care options for people with disabilities, and he previously served as National Ambassador for Easter Seals. In 2015, Trotman was presented with the Spirit of Ability Award by Braun Ability in recognition of his efforts at Old National. In July 2016, Ben was nominated as an honorary torchbearer for the Indiana Bicentennial Torch Relay. Ben was presented with the Individual Achievement Award by Leadership Evansville and most recently was nominated by Evansville Business Journal as 20 under 40. Ben serves on the Easter Seal Southwestern Indiana Board, the Indiana Vocational Rehabilitation Service Commission, the Alumni Council of the University of Southern Indiana, the Indiana ABLE Authority Award, and has been a passionate supporter for Habitat for Humanity. With all those great things, uh, Ben asked me to add just about four more things. He wanted to add how handsome, funny, well-spoken, and underpaid he is. The difference is that I look this way whenever I said that part. <laughs> ben resides in Evansville, Indiana. Please help me welcome Ben Trotman. always raised me that you can't expect people to give you something just because you want it. You've got to earn it. I was probably searching for a job for four or five years and the hardest thing is I would get calls from my resume but when I got there I would say 90% of the time I knew in the first five seconds they were not interested in me. One of the first interviews I had was one of the worst. The first question he asked me was, how fast can you type? I do not type that fast, but I can type and I don't make a lot of errors. And he said something like, well, you're not going to fit in here. And he ended the interview. So I think that was the first real life experience when someone said, well, I don't want you just because you're different. I went home and cried. And then after a couple of years, I just got numb to it. I still had that little glimmer of hope that someday I would find someone who would give me a chance. 
Achievability is a professional mentoring program started at Old National Bank that pairs our executive leaders with individuals with disabilities for a year-long mentoring program. So we brought Ben on as an employee and I challenged Ben to make sure we created the best program for people with disabilities. And those relationships are really transforming our organization. Mandy Kelly is um, a mentee that I met a couple of summers ago. We immediately hit it off. She literally has a smile that will light up a room. She said she was nervous in the beginning, but I never got that feeling. I was literally scared at the beginning. I didn't want to say something or do something that would hurt her feelings. He and you and I have probably become more friends than mentor and mentee. She works for us now, which is, is great. I love my coworkers. They treat me like any other person. About a month after Mandy started, I had three people from the area that she works in come to me and just describe how great she was and the value that she had brought to that department. You know, there's a very simple way to look at achievability. It's just smart, good business. You hire great people, they care about your company, they're great coworkers, and it's just in a selfish way, it's a great program for us as a company for that single reason. This program started with one executive leader and one individual, and it's grown. We have folks with spinal cord injuries, we have folks with cerebral palsy, blind, deaf, autism. We're targeting all abilities. The idea of the program is not to be hubbed in one certain area, but to be shared throughout the Midwest and the entire region. But our ultimate goal is to spread this program with every single community, every single employer and state that's willing to adopt being inclusive. As you think about the pairing of a mentor and a mentee, and the real motivation is learning. It's about learning to be a better person. It's about learning to be a better leader. You have to accept some things about yourself that maybe you don't like. And that thing was really primarily that I judge people. I judge people on based on what they look like and the first impressions. And growing as a human being from that experience has been amazing. And the unknown scares people. But we aren't scary people. We're just looking for opportunities just like everybody else. When people say, oh, you know, you're not normal. Well, no one's normal. Uh, you are 
a very independent person, as I'm sure you all can remember, and in your lives. Uh, you know, in, in my mind, there was about three things that were most important. Uh, I worked a job uh, detailing cars. The job was important. I worked that job so that I could get some money for my truck, which was number two most important, and I drove my truck around with all the pretty girls. <laughs> most important. Now at age 17, now, now I will say, um, I'm not ashamed to say that the level of importance has not changed uh, very much since then. Um, but we'll let that one go. You know, be, going from being totally independent as a 17-year-old to having to count on someone to help with feeding, to count on someone to get me up every day, to count on someone to itch or scratch my nose was a totally different experience for me. And I had no idea what that meant. I had never thought about disability. My family and I had never thought about disability uh, before my accident um, in 2006. Uh, luckily, I had um, the passion. I had great family members and friends around uh, that helped me uh, graduate on time um, in high school. I get the first to admit that I might have cheated off of a few people to Oh wait a second, I said out loud. <laughs> um, I graduated on time with my class. I was very proud to to do that even after this uh, life changing injury. Um, I took a couple years off between uh, high school and, and college. Uh, in between that time, I had the opportunity to serve as a national ambassador for Easter Seals. Um, and Easter Seals is a similar organization uh, to Wendell Foster. Uh, for those of you who may not know about Easter Seals, it's one of the largest uh, not-for-profits um, in the United States that serves people with disabilities. I had the opportunity to travel all across the country, uh, from Washington, D.C., um, to New Orleans, uh, to Atlanta, uh, to San Diego, uh, to advocate on behalf of people and families with disabilities. And, you know, again, going from at 17 not knowing what disability meant to learning from families all across the country that were impacted by disability uh, was very eye-opening. I learned that one in five people, one in five people, look around the room and think about it, one in five people are affected by a disability in their lifetime. That's, again, just something I never would have thought about before. And throughout my travels, getting to learn that was important. I learned uh, the powerful impact of what services like Easter Seals and the Wendell Foster of the world provide for people all across this country. 60, 60 million Americans are affected by disability. One billion people in the world are affected by disability. It's a significant population. So, uh, moving past my experience with Easter Seals, uh, I somehow found my way uh, to the University of Southern Indiana. Uh, I think they just had enough of me after about five and a half years and uh, just gave me the gift of graduation. They thought, we've got to get this guy out of here. Um, I can tell you that our CEO, Mr. Jones, sitting at the table over here, is still auditing those grades. He's not sure how that happened. Um, it's like, the one that, why do I keep bringing up these things? I'll have to get a pardon from the mayor around here. Uh, it's across the, the bridge, so it works, right? Um, upon graduation from USI, a couple of months uh, before I graduated, I met with a couple of local CEOs um, in the tri-state just to talk about what I could do in my future. You know, what, what is it that um, I could possibly do? I had uh, I grad graduated with a degree in PR and advertising. Um, I was very, very interested in sports. I uh, wanted to get into sports broadcasting of some sort. Uh, but I wasn't exactly sure what I did uh, or what I wanted to do. And I, 
again, I, I had a passion for people, helping people, um, and had this history with Easter seals. Well, it just so happens that after a few uh, different conversations, you know, one of them being with uh, two of the good folks at Old National Bank, I was offered a position uh, to join a financial, financial institution, <coughs> Old National, um, to lead uh, a charge to do what we could as an institution to better employ people with disabilities. Now that was something that I was passionate about, but I can tell you, I keep asking Bob, where is that baseball team that I was going to manage? Um, we're in the, I'm sure we're in the process of acquiring a baseball team at some point. Um, throughout the past four years, I had the privilege uh, of working um, with our institution on creating a culture that is more inclusive of people with disabilities. We've created program, programs such as Achievability, the video that you watched. But we had to learn some lessons. And for me, it was using that knowledge that I gained in my travels with Easter Seals, where about one in five people are affected. Um, I then learned, you know, upon joining Old National and learning about um, the war for great talent you know, that we all, business owners in here, you can um, register with this, and we're all looking for great people. When, when I share with you that one in five people are affected by a disability, when I share with you that people with disabilities are the largest minority in the world, and also the most underemployed minority in the world. Why does that happen, and how do we make a difference? I want to share two examples with you. Uh, there's a young lady by the name of Evelyn, that Evelyn has uh, a bit of a uh, anxiety disorder. And Evelyn interviewed with Old National uh, before we started our uh, disability inclusion initiative. Evelyn is one that because of her anxiety, sometimes she doesn't respond right away to questions in an interview. So you, know, you ask her the normal five or six questions that most interviews have. And sometimes she takes a minute to respond. Well, uh, I've also learned that recruiters um, in the HR and talent acquisition world spend six seconds, six seconds looking at someone's resume and under two minutes evaluating whether that person is a good fit. People like Evelyn, we're not going to make it through that interview process. If she takes a couple extra seconds to process a question because of her anxiety. I can tell you that we followed up with Evelyn about a year afterwards once we started our inclusion initiatives at Old National and had another interview. And she showed up the same way, very chipper. She came with a few folders that had her test scores, Evelyn was interviewing for an input, uh, an entry level input job where she did a lot of typing and what input that she had the test scores and said she was very good at what she did. She had practiced, they had all been there. She was prepared, she came on time. I've never seen somebody so organized for an interview. Yet I, I, and then I, I think back from a year ago, why, why in the world wouldn't we have hired her? Well, it's because our interview process was broken. It's because we were more concentrated on those five answers instead of the tests, instead of the skills that she actually had. So what we did is we did this crazy thing. And we looked at these practice tests for us that were phenomenal, that that one did. And we thought, you know what? We'll hire her. Evelyn's been with Old National for over three years. She's one of our most efficient data input control operators. And in fact, when somebody is running behind in this department, they 
typically go to Ethel. Yet, a couple years before, just because of a couple of interview questions, we did not hire someone like Evelyn because of the way it had been in the past. My, my final example, um, which is about two individuals um, that are in achievability, our work, um, is Chris and Madeline. So Chris, our former CFO, he has a, a new title that I can't remember. And we have all kinds of fancy names at Old National. It makes it confusing for people like me. I don't have notes in front of me. You know, it's all these acronyms. Uh, so uh, I paired Chris uh, with a young lady by the name of Madeline Smith. Madeline uh, is a double major in finance and accounting. And again, this was a, a, a pairing in our mentoring program that you just watched the video about where we pair uh, young people, hiring young professionals with disabilities with our executives. So, Madeline, who is a double major in finance and accounting, I pair with our former CFO. Madeline happened to be blind, and Chris thought, my goodness, how in the world does someone like Madeline, who has a visual impairment, going to be able to work in the financial uh, sector. How is she going to be able to navigate the screens and do all of these different things? Well, very quickly, Chris realized that, well, wait a second, Madeline's about to graduate from the University of Evansville and then just give out certificates or graduation well unless it's me of course <laughs> she's earning this right Chris realized that Madeline had been quote dealing with this disability since she was 13 years old when sorry to beg you Chris realized that there were many assistive technology out there that made Madeline able to either keep at least on track uh, with the rest of her classmates, or um, in many cases, perform even better. Chris then learned that Madeline had just returned from a trip to Europe where she traveled to 15 different countries, six of them by herself. Now, look, guys, I hate to admit it, but you know, I made this early morning travel to Owensboro, and I thought, I don't know where the hell I'm going. <laughs> now, I made it here, but you think about somebody like Madeline, who has a visual impairment that traveled through Europe by herself, that's impressive, right? So what we've learned is, with the cases of Evelyn, in the case of Chris and Madeline, it wasn't their disability that was stopping us from hiring them. It was our own assumptions that were stopping us from hiring them. It was our own assumptions that was making us unable to find someone who would be a quality employee. We'll leave you with one last example. Um, just in mind. When you think about someone like myself, uh, I think about me for a minute, let's get real selfish. Uh, whenever I, let's say, make a trip to Owensboro okay, and go to Colby's, which, thank you for Colby's the other day. Oh, that's a great place, guys. Well done. I think I'm going to be going back soon. Anybody wants to pay for this afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> Are the bourbons great around here too? Um, better not push my luck anymore. I got some bosses staring at me. <laughs> Whenever someone with a disability like myself considers or thinks about going somewhere, am I going to be able to park in the appropriate spot? Is there going to be a ramp that's close by? Can I get in the door? Is there going to be stairs? Will I be able to pull up? Um, to the table. We're just talking about going out to eat and making it to a restaurant. But what I and many people with this
disabilities have to do with. And those instances is problem solved. And aren't we, all people in this room, looking for more problem solvers in our corporations? With that, I want to leave you because I encourage, I encourage you to think differently about the way that you engage with people. I encourage you to think differently about the way that you might be making an assumption uh, that you've not thought about before. And with that, I encourage you to grow your workforce and your passion of people with disabilities. Achievability, the video you watched, is our effort at Old National Bank uh, to recruit, retain, and learn from many incredible people uh, throughout our community. And without a doubt, uh, with the friendly nature um, and good food, uh, this great community, you can make an impact as well. Thank you very much for having me, and I appreciate your time. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It's upon command. And in that beloved Christmas story, a young lady by the name of Cindy Lou Who melts the Grinch's heart um, by showing him the true spirit of Christmas. Are you stealing Christmas? Get back here. By the way, nice tights, Grinch. Um, so today we thought we would show uh, the Grinch that we can actually melt hearts right here in Owens World too. We have some great Shop Owens World gifts today, and we're going to have a little fun with you guys. We are going to have the Grinch help us give out some of these awesome Shop Owens World gifts today with what we call the Quick Recall Free For All. Candace, can we have some Christmas music, please? Mariah's great. We've only heard this four times this morning. Love that playlist, Candace. You may want to diversify sometime. <laughs> Make that playlist like the workforce, Candace. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so it is a quick recall free for all. Y'all like my no peeking hat? Isn't this fabulous? Uh, no peeking. Um, okay, so I will ask some trivia questions from the most beloved Christmas TV specials. And the Grinch is going to be handing out these awesome prizes. The first, are you giving your Okay, he says he's not. Let's see who the first prize is from, Grinch. A delicious basket from Hillview Farms Meats. The person who shouts out the answer to this question first. Frosty, when he comes to life, says what? <laughs> Give it to Sarah! Da -da 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 -da! Our big winner! Congratulations, you were on it too. Alright. Our next prize is going to be this lovely set of uh, pearl earrings from Lance and Company. Ladies, how awesome. Which TV special features this line? Nobody wants a Charlie in a box. Oh, I heard her off like way in the back with a female voice. All the way in the back. Debbie! Get it! Okay, by the way, the Grinch has a difficult time seeing through the eye hole, so there can be a really ill-timed face plant at some point during the trivia this morning. Okay, speaking of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, love this. Oh, and for, we're playing for this awesome uh, gift uh, basket from the Willow Tree, a delightful surprise here from the Willow Tree. What is Rudolph's girlfriend's name? Oh, I heard that right here. Look at you. Is your first name Clarice too? How'd you know that? That is not to be confused with Clarice from the Silence of the Lambs. That would be a totally different Christmas special. Rudolph rubs the lotion on his skin, or else he gets to hose again. Be really weird. Okay, well, we'll stick with Rudolph. He's very popular, you know. Um, what is the name of the elf who wants to be a dentist? Oh, Harvey, right? Her female voice, right there. Damn it! Oh, what did she win? Oh, a gift card from Boucher's Men's Boutique. That's awesome. All right. 
uh, next up for grabs, we have a gift from Kidstop. From the mom. And on the fifth day of Christmas, what about you, look? Okay, this girl needs to be on Jeopardy. I don't know what you're doing sitting here this morning, but you should be with Alex Trebek somewhere. Go ahead. Should we just qualify her from the other, the other questions? Oh, that's a poor resounding guess. But she's sharing the rough look, though. She passed those off. That's awesome. She gave, gave those to Sandra. That's awesome. People, that's awesome. Grinch, you just facing your heart getting warmer. What is this? We have a gift bag from Boutique 54. That's awesome. Uh, what was the little girl's name in Frosty the Snowman? Oh, I heard it right, I heard it right here. It was right back in here. Somebody said Karen. Was that you, Kathy? I said Karen. She says Karen. That's what it is. Kathy Mullins wins uh, Boutique 54. We have some Kate Spade shades here from our friends at Owensboro Family Eye Care. Random Christmas special, but this really is a thing. What was the first name of the long-eared Christmas doggy? Oh, I heard it. Nestor. Who said Nestor? Right back there. Oh, wait. Oh, he won the Kate Spade glasses. The Grinch really is trying to steal Christmas. Give me that. <laughs> Robin's resale and boutique right here. Uh, no offense, Tom, when you hear this question. What was the name of the evil mayor in Santa Claus is Coming to Town? Oh, I heard it right back there first. What'd you say? You got it! Share this with somebody, please. Debbie's going to give the frame right back to the back. She won't get Okay. Oh, this right here. Okay, I have. Oh, this is awesome. I have a one month membership to the Owensboro Health Park. For the person who gets this correct, in Rudolph's Shiny New Year, um, Happy, who was Baby New Year, he wore a hat. Why did he wear a hat? Big ear. I heard it right back there. He had gigantic ears. I mean, like, seriously. Get behind him and go, Poof. he'll hang glide over the Ohio. That's how big they were. Uh, uh, she won the one of the membership right there. Okay, hurry. Okay, so we have a uh, gift certificate from Red Wing. A gift certificate from Red Wing. That's awesome. Goes to the person who sings the song in the year without a Santa Claus. I'm Mr. Heat Miser. Heat Miser. I heard it right there. Who was it? Who said it? Grinch right over here. And the final gift today from Jeans Health Foods. <laughs> Turn around. The final gift of the day goes to the person, this is from Jeans Health Foods, for the person who yells the name of this person. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Dan Cook, I'm rich today. You all, thank you so much for being with us. Been awesome today. You were incredible. Uh, Merry Christmas. We will see you guys in January. Thank you so much for being with us. And happy holidays. Merry Christmas. <laughs>